Hi everybody, this is Stephanie from Russell Dazzle Rabbitry and Yarns LLC and by the end of this video we're going to show you the start to finish process of how to spin this single of yarn. In the previous video we showed you how to use hand carders to hand card for this. These are one ounce bobbins each. This is an empty bobbin on our Ashford Elizabeth II spinning wheel. We've got everything set up. We have all of our roll eggs down on the floor and we are ready to start spinning. So the blend that we're spinning is a 25% Angora Rabbit and 75% Gotland Sheep's Wool blend. So we just start out, we take our roll egg, you can see it's quite fluffy, 90 degree angle and you get that joined on. When you start spinning, you may have to adjust the tension. You may have to adjust how you're sitting for your posture. My wheel is making a little bit of clicking noises here. Just wearing a little bit. That's something we can adjust based upon where it's hitting some point. We're not going to do that right now. I'm not going to stop spinning to adjust for the noise yet. But you can see we just joined on and we keep spinning. We need to adjust our tension. When you start seeing my right hand pulling back like this, that means that the spinning wheel itself, the tension, it's not pulling this spun fiber into the orifice and winding it on the bobbin fast enough. So that means I'm tradling and I'm, you know, I'm trading, tradling with my foot. And this is a single tradle, single tradle spinning wheel, spinning wheel as opposed to a double. And to adjust the tension, I need this little, this little knob adjusted. So I join on again that 90 degree angle with my wool. I adjusted the tension. I really want this, when I'm spinning this, I really want this wool getting pulled out of my hand without having to pull my right hand back. So to spin a consistent yarn, we do have other videos about that to spin a more professional quality yarn. You really want, if there's any uneven, like if there's any bumps, any second cuts, any pieces of vegetable matter, you want to pull those out. And you can smooth it down with your finger or you can pull it out. So my left hand would smooth it down like this. So here's a little bump that didn't smooth down or my right hand takes it out and just pulls out that section, that second cut. So the left hand is, all these, these fingers are feeling what's going on, my eyes are watching what I'm doing. I'm pulling out any of these additional small, short, second cuts of fiber. I'm used to tradling pretty fast. I need to adjust a little bit more tension because I'm still pulling back a little bit too much with my right hand. I want, I want to get my tension right that it just really drafts, really pulls this out of my hand without having to move that right hand. I want, when we're, when we're spinning, and we want to spin a traditional, consistent yarn. We want this tension to be correct to help evenly pull it out of, out of your hand. So as you see, our bobbin is filling up. We just keep moving this. That was the first roll leg. We've got our second one. And same 90 degree join. We're not joining at the end of this we join, as you can see, a couple inches up, a good four, five, six inches up from where your thread, from where your single 
stops. And that gives us a bit of time. So when you're doing your joins, good joins are important to a good yarn. And you'll find out very quickly when you're going to, if you use a ball winder, you'll find out very quickly if your yarn has good joins or not, or if your yarn was spun properly and well or not, because a ball winder, it will break. Your, your single will break in weak spots. And when you're going to ply your yarn, even if you're just plying it from a lazy cate, which is this device down there, even if you're plying it from a lazy cate, because of the tension, weak yarn can break. And what that, what that tells you is that you need to work on different parts of your spinning. And a yarn can break, a single can break for many different reasons. And so there's a lot to figure out in spinning. And, and over time and over practicing, it gets figured out. And you learn how to do it. I'm leaving a few lumps in there. But getting your tension right, getting your trailing speed right, getting your drafting correct, your left hand feeling the yarn, your twist, the amount of twist that's actually getting put into the yarn, getting this all balanced, it just takes time and experience and learning. Too much twist. If I were to stop and just hold on to this and pinch this and keep trailing, the, the twist stops right here in my fingers and it would keep twisting and twisting and twisting and twisting this section and then it will break. When there's too much twist, there's so much tension on the fibers that it cannot withstand the tension and these fibers will eventually break. So when you're spinning your yarn, you wanna be balancing out the twist. You want to make sure you have a good twist going on, not too much, not too little. When you're also spinning your yarn, when there's too little twist, it falls apart. So here we are at the end of our yarn again, the end of our uh, spinning. We've moved to the next peg, to the next hook. Your spinning wheel may be a bit different. It might be pegs. It might be a slider. There's all sorts of different spinning wheels, but we want it wound onto the bobbin nicely. And so we keep moving it. And see, the thing is, you guys know I'm terrible at that because sometimes I just get into spinning and I just keep spinning and spinning and it builds up on one particular section. And one of the reasons why that's not good is because when you go to ply it or when you go to unwind this bobbin, it gets kind of loose and funny and it may catch. But we moved it. We're gonna join that 90 degree angle and then pull it back using our left hand to smooth it on in there, pulling out any of those bumps. So we know the yarn that we're going to the use of this yarn. We want to make a hat. We want to knit a winter hat. And I'm pretty excited about this yarn, pretty excited about this winter hat because it's going to have a flannel, a 100% a cotton flannel inside of the hat. So the outside is going to be this 75% Gotland sheep's wool and the inside of it is going to be a 100% cotton flannel insert and it'll be sewn together so the hat will be one piece the insert won't come out sometimes I spin yarn and have a project in mind from the beginning and sometimes I just spin yarn letting the fiber tell you what it wants to do and so we know this has a particular project a particular end result in mind. But yarn, fiber like this, it'll tell you how it wants to spin if you listen to it. So the Gotland, the Gotland is very nice because it's it's like a flexible fiber. It's it's okay being spun thick. It's okay being spun thinner. It's flexible. The Angora the Angora is a bit more picky. It prefers to be spun thin. And you, you learn that you can manipulate these things. You can ask the fiber to do something it doesn't really want to do by choosing 
your tools and by choosing your method of spinning. But the fiber does have a preference. And Angora likes to be spun thin because Angora itself, each of the individual Angora fibers, it's thin itself. And so it's, it just makes sense that it naturally wants to be spun thin because it's thin. Different thicker yarns, different thicker fibers, for example, not yarns, they may want to be spun thicker because they themselves are each individual strand, each individual piece of fiber, hair, or piece of wool is thicker. And crimp, of course, plays into that, how it's processed, how it's, if it's carded or not, your method of spinning. You really can make fiber do so many things, even if it's not what it naturally wants to do. And that's part of increasing your skill. So the entire time I'm spinning this, we just keep going and going and going. Switch it on to the next hook. Same process, grab the next row leg, join on that 90 degree. This wasn't that best join, I did it kind of fast. Your joins of course matter. A weak join will come apart. It's gonna make a weak spot in the yarn. And if you're creating yarn that you want to last, if you're creating yarn that you want to be enjoyable to use, then you want to keep these joins good. So do a bit better than that join I had. That was a bit of a lazy join, a rush join. And there's no, really not any use for rushing and spinning yarn. Sometimes when you're doing it on a contract or if you have to spin yarn and there's only so much time before you have to make a finished piece, if you spin yarn professionally, then it can be, it can be rushed. But spinning yarn is really more of an enjoyable experience and not to be stressful. Perhaps at first, just like anything else, when you're first learning how to spin yarn, it can be, it can be st stressful, but change is stressful. And stress is, it helps allow for growth. And the more one practices spinning, the better one gets at it. Just like anything in life. So I can see here's a piece of vegetable matter that's spun in there. When you have to take out vegetable matter that's kind of stuck in there like that, you see the movement I used with my fingers. I take the tips of my fingernails and I go like this. And for vegetable matter that can break it off and get it out of there. There's a little piece of a second cut. Again, we just use the tips of our fingernails to get it out. So this is an ounce. We're spinning the one ounce single. My, my posture while spinning is not very good and that can cause neck pain and back pain. I'm sitting quite forward in my chair so your posture does matter when you're spinning. And this is a second cut that I'm just gonna leave in for now. When I'm plying, that might be easier to take it out because when you ply, the single loosens up a bit. So when you know how you're gonna, if you're spinning the single and you know you're gonna ply it back on another strand or back on itself, plying is just simply going in the opposite direction of how you've spun it. And so when you go in the opposite direction, you loosen up the twist. And so if I was going to leave this yarn as a single, this would be about, it would have as about as the maximum amount of twist I would want for a single. It would be just at the edges of, of almost to the point of being overspun. And overspun is a term we use that just simply says you spun too much twist into it. You put too much twist in it. It wasn't pulled in to the orifice and wound on the bobbin soon enough. It was spent too much time in your hands getting all twisted up. And that's what overspun is. And you can tell a yarn is overspun a, a few different ways. It may feel hard, harder than other parts of the yarn. A section may feel quite sleek, not as fluffy, 
because it simply doesn't have as much air in it, doesn't have as much space between the fibers. Here's a big section of Angora we don't want in there. That row leg's done. We move it to the end hook and we keep going. You see we don't, it's a better joint. We don't let our wheel start unwinding in the opposite direction when we're spinning because if my wheel starts going in the opposite direction, it's gonna create a disaster on my bobbin. So we are spinning on the Ashford Elizabeth too. And she's a picky wheel. She's a finicky wheel. This is not a wheel that's easy, uh, easy to spin on, in my opinion, because it is a very specific wheel. This wheel was not designed to make art yarns. It wasn't. It was designed to make a traditional single ply of yarn. So this wheel works very well for spinning traditional yarns or spinning fibers such as merino, especially angora. And of course, why does it work so well spinning these fibers? Some wheels are like a jack of all trades. They'll do, they'll spin anything and you can change them up. My first wheel, Bob, was such a wheel. It was a Ashford Kiwi, the original Ashford Kiwi. And Bob was a double treadle you could do all sorts of different things on it. But it never, it never specialized. And this is more of a specialized sort of wheel where it specializes in this sort of yarn. This is what it was made and designed and born to do. But the big wheel on a spinning wheel is called the flywheel. And this has quite a large flywheel. This, some spinning wheels have smaller flywheels. Some of the wheels are more ornate. Some of them are more simple. There's all sorts of different spinning wheels. But this particular spinning wheel, the flywheel is large. And the bigger your flywheel, the less times you have to treadle to make the flywheel spin around. There's different spinning wheels called great wheels. They have very large flywheels. And a great wheel doesn't take much. You normally have to stand. You don't treadle it. But you normally stand and spin it around, and it doesn't take many revolutions of a great wheel to start putting twist into a yarn. So I'm not actually, even though we finished that roll egg, this is winding up quite well, quite evenly. I'm not gonna switch from this hook. I'm going to keep it on this hook. We're gonna put another roll egg on this section. And then we're gonna work our way back down this way, moving the single back down the hooks. And that'll tell us where we load this onto the bobbin. So we're gonna do another join again, a couple inches, a couple inches up, 90 degrees, press it down with your left hand. We just keep going. We need to adjust the tension. You'll notice as your bobbin gets more and more full, you need to continuously monitor the tension of the uptake of the yarn. Good. A white section here, the lighter color section, it's not actually white, it's a tort color, so it's got a cream off-white color to it. That was what was coming up lighter. And then this is a darker section, that's Scotland. And you can feel it when you're spinning, you can start feeling the difference. But we just keep spinning. Let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine roll eggs in there left. I don't know how many we started out with. But we have nine left to spin. And the spinning process is just very repetitive. Over and over, you do the same thing. Your foot pushes down on the pedal, on the treadle, over and over, the same repetitive, consistent motion. The flywheel goes around over and over. 
your hands are doing the same motion over and over and over. And when you've been, when you've been spinning the same thing for a while and you try to switch to something else, it may be surprising. You may notice that it's a little bit more difficult to switch to something else because your, your hands and your body, it's the muscle memory, it's used to spinning one particular type of yarn. But it can be a good thing when you need to spin as much yarn for something like a blanket or a sweater that requires a lot of yarn. And so spinning over and over the same way can help you spin a consistent yarn. So there's a tight section of this roll egg coming up here that I'm pulling out because it's got some uh, webbed pieces in it. I don't like that. That was a weird join. Joined in two different sections. One's higher and one's lower. Not what we want to see. If you really don't like your join, just pull off what you're joining on. Start again. If it's a weak join, if it's really a poor join, just completely start over. Because it's not worth breaking, having your single break. Because when you put it back together, it's it takes time to put the strand, the single back together when you're plying. And then of course a broken spot can be weak in your yarn, in your finished yarn. And depending on how you join it, you may end up with a knot there. You may end up with a lump in your finished yarn. And if you don't want lumpy yarn, then you've You've ended up with something you completely don't want. Spinning what you've hand carded, and this is hand carded with Howard 190 teeth per inch hand carders, which we did a video of. But spinning what you've hand carded yourself teaches you a lot about your hand carding skills. So of course you can certainly buy something somebody else has carded did that 90 join that grabbed on real fast but if you spin something you've carded yourself it teaches you how well you're blending and how well you're carding and it shows you how well you're processing the fi your own fibers and one of the things I've recommended since I started making videos is using what you make is don't when you're learning and when you are trying to improve your skills and for example, spinning a traditional yarn like this, when you're spinning something like this, use what you've made. Use, use the item, the yarn, whether it's the roll egg that you've hand carded or the yarn that you've spun, whatever it is, don't be afraid to use it because using, going through the entire process and then using the finished product is not a waste. It teaches you. It shows you how well you did and it shows you the areas that you did well in as well as the areas that you didn't do well in and you can improve. And spinning yarn is like a constant process of improvement. There's so many different iterations. Every time, every time you do something in the process of spinning yarn, it teaches you. It teaches you all sorts of different things. And sometimes those things don't even have to do with yarn. So for example, patience. We live in a world where everything is instant. Not everyone lives in a world where everything is instant. However, I live in a world where everything can be available, made available instantly. Spinning yarn is not one of those things. There's not much instant about spinning, spinning yarn. And so this is a very methodical and purposeful activity. But this yarn, I've spun it up, I've taken the time, taken hours and hours to, to process this fiber, to wash it, to cart it, to spin it, and then I'll ply it, I'll wash it and set the twist, and I will go and use this fiber and make, a, make the hat out of it. And that's a lot of time, but what it does is it shows you how, how good is this yarn that you're making. So when you go to do it again, any weakness can be worked on and corrected and made stronger.
And that might sound exhausting to some people, but to me, it sounds wonderful. Because it means you're never stuck. You're, you're never just stuck with what you have. You can always take a look at it and figure something out. There's probably nothing as fun as or more enjoyable. Well, I'm sure there's things as fun or as enjoyable. There, but it is incredibly rewarding to spin a single and ply it back on itself and not have it break once, not have it get tangled once. So this is built up right here. We're ready to move it on to the next hook, move it back down, because we want it now to start filling up this bobbin. We're on our next roll leg. There's that join. This is a little thick section, that's okay, we'll let it be. We'll forgive it, or perhaps forgive ourselves, since we're spinning it. And I can feel, I can see that right hand, it wants to move back. And so I can adjust that tension again pretty soon here. My spinning wheel has yarn right here because I've broken so many of these, um, broken so many of those threads for my tension. It causes friction on the bobbin because the tension is trying to slow the bobbin down. Get that piece of vegetable matter out of there. And so when it causes friction, it wears the fibers or it wears the thread or the leather or the plastic, whatever it is that you have on your tension, it wears it down. And that's fine, it'll break, you just replace it. And the springs, these may start stretching out, that's fine, you just replace it. In fact, I think these are, I don't know if those are the original or if those are the replacement springs. But a spinning, a spinning wheel is mechanical, and so the, the parts do eventually wear out. And they need to be replaced. And obviously replacing the parts of your spinning wheel when necessary helps you make a better yarn because instead of competing with your spinning wheel or having to fight with your spinning wheel to make sure it's, it's getting the job done, you set yourself up that your spinning wheel just is proper for functioning for the job that you want it to do and it just gets it done. No fighting. There's a lump second cut of Angora that we took out. I don't do anything with these second cuts. I just take these and discard them. This is a piece that wasn't properly carded at the end of Gotland. The fibers were stuck too close together at the end. I completely take all that out because when I'm spinning this single, if I left that in this yarn, it would make a lump. And I really don't want a ton of lumps in this. Some variation in texture is normal. It's natural and it's beautiful in hand spun yarn because it gives it such a depth. It's not like the how s acrylic store yarn is so ridiculously sterile and there's no personality to it. It has no life in it at all. It's just simply spinning death and knitting with death. I, I don't know. It's not my thing. Moving on to the next hook. Grab our next roll leg. Here we go with that 90 degree join. It really grabs on fast. Not all fibers will grab on this fast. This piece next needs to be drafted a bit better. That join's bad. Start over. If your wool goes straight through the orifice like this, that's okay. Line it back up. I put mine together. Let it grab, let it go through the orifice, pull it back out. I had a hook for this to reach in and grab that. I don't know, one of the shows I was at, it, I lost it. Lost it somewhere. You can buy replacement parts. I just never did. So did a better join. 
and keep going. It can be stressful at first when you're first learning how to spin and you see that single get pulled through the orifice, and that's okay. It happens. It happens frequently when you're just starting out, trying to figure out the tension, trying to figure out the drafting, tradling speed, trying to figure out what all your hands are supposed to be doing. One, two, three, four, five, six. Roll eggs left to spin besides this one. We just keep going. Just that tension, a sliver of a of a movement on that knob. Doesn't take much on the Ashford Elizabeth II to adjust the tension. This I have set up as the single drive. That's this band right here is your drive. You can have a double drive with the Ashford Elizabeth II. Mine is set up as a single. I've never spun on a double drive and so I spin. Keep it on the single. So I can feel that just that slight adjustment of that knob made the upkeep, the uptake, not the upkeep, the uptake of the single. It adjusted it enough that my left hand now pinches a bit more, so the twist and the draft is a bit more controlled. That almost slipped through my fingers. Right there. It's pulling quite hard. And that's okay. If you need to back off your tension, you can. However, when I spin, even if I have just a little bit too much tension, that's okay because I know as this bobbin keeps getting full, that will, the tension will reduce and reduce. It'll catch up and even out. And then at some point I'll need to make it tense. Yeah, more tension again. Get that joint on there. Next row leg. These aren't very thickly um, carded row legs. I can make bigger row legs, but when I hand carded these, I hand carded these a uh, little bit with less wool. And so you're, if you have row legs that have more wool and you don't break your row leg, then you have less joins to worry about in your yarn. The smaller you make your roll legs, or if you're spinning with something called punis, which are very small, tightly wound roll legs. Ooh, I don't like that section. That got a little lumpy. But if you're spinning with something with a small amount of fiber in each roll leg, then you're joining, you're going to have more joins in your yarn because you're constantly having to join the new roll leg on more. If you make in hand card um, if you hand card more fiber into your roll legs, or if you spin for a bat, from a bat, for example, which is a ginormous sheet of wool, you have less joints, unless, of course, you're, you keep breaking your, your fiber. So that's another, just another tip that if you are looking for a yarn with less joints, then spin from bigger sheets of fabric. So for example, you can spin from a bat or you can spin from bigger roll legs. Make your roll legs bigger because then you will just automatically have less uh, individual joints. So it took just that short amount of time and already I can feel this um, tension has gone way, way, way down. It happens fast. 
and it's not pulling as much out of my hands anymore. Just that short amount of time and just a dramatic change in tension. I don't like this piece. I'm going to just completely take that out. That's like a one inch section of Angora. I don't want that in here because that's a very different staple length from the rest. We're going to switch again, switch hooks. Looks like we have, this is on the third hook from me. We're going to do our join. That's it right there. And that's together. It grabs on fast because we're trailing fast. If you need, if your joints, if you're struggling with your joints, tradle a little bit slower, reduce that tension, reduce that upkeep, and your joints might become a bit more manageable for you. If you're feeling like you're fighting your joints or if you're feeling like it's really stressful and they're rushed and you're just hoping that it stays together because it, it's getting grabbed and getting, you know, you're spinning, getting it grabbed really fast into here, you know, slow down your tradling, reduce your tension, slow everything down. Now, if you find, for example, and Angora can be difficult, 100% Angora can be a bit difficult or tricky to join onto 100% Angora. And so if your Angora is too tightly spun up, or if you have a section of this blend that's a lot of angora and you have another section of angora blending on uh, joining onto it what you can do is you you want to make sure this is not too tightly spun up because if it's really tightly spun up angora it just struggles to join on to something like that it needs a little bit of air in there a little bit of loftiness so just kind of holding it and unspinning a little bit or even breaking off that tightly spun section and correcting the the amount of twist you have in your single will help you join better. And this isn't the only type of join that there is. However, this is the join that I have that I use the most and it is the join that breaks the least for me. And it seems to be just with all sorts of different fibers, the join that works the best. Four roll eggs left after this. This is, when you're spinning, you can take breaks. You don't have to spin up in one sitting. This particular video, that's simply what we're showing. Take out that big lump, join back on. Just a small section left in my hand of this roll egg. You can see the amount of space between my hands of where I'm drafting is not that long. It's just my preferred method of drafting, my preferred method of, of spinning what I'm comfortable with. It's not a long draw. A long draw is if there's more space in between my hands. This is more short. All right, switch over. To the next hook again. After this row leg three left, we're gonna do that join. It joins on fast. Spinning gives you a lot of time to think. Once you figure out how you best spin, a lot of time to just sit. Even if you don't want to think, a lot of time to just pay attention and be mindful of what you're doing with your hands. It's a very rewarding experience when everything comes together. It's very aggravating when it doesn't come together or when there's constant problems. Perhaps there's a fiber that just gives you grief. You want to spin it a certain way and it's just not agreeing with, with you. Ooh, almost let that go. Almost slipped out of my fingers. And this is Angora joining on. 
it's that white piece. That's not a good join. So I'm going to switch join Gotland to Gotland. Much better join. It's getting a little thin. I can feel it. I don't want it spun that thin. So I draft a little, allow a little bit more to draft, a little bit wool to come into that drafting zone. That's this area right here. Got clump I want to take out. Over and over, same thing. Any of these little lumps, I don't want to see that. I don't want to feel that in my yarn. Fast join on, that's a bad join. First section was bad, second section grabbed on. I don't like that join though. Not a good 90 degree angle if you saw the way I held my hands. Did it fast, could be a better 90. I could have corrected that by slowing down my tradling. So if you're finding you're, you're doing fast joints like that and it's just not that good 90 degree angle, you can slow down your tradling. Now I see I've got a bigger section of Angora coming in here, that white. Now this is a section I'm going to join that Angora, a bit more Angora to Angora. Really letting that grip on there. So after this I've got those three more roll eggs to spin. If you're finding you really are struggling with joints too, you'll notice that I spin up a lot of the roll egg until there's hardly much left. You can leave a bit more of the roll egg, you can leave more than this. A bit more fiber in your hand and you can find it a bit more easier to join as well. So let's see here, we're gonna join this in. There we go, see those fibers join on. When you, when you see that, there's a little bit of tension when I was pulling back with this because the draft, the, uh, the, the section that was being drafted, the twist was really wanting to come in here. And I had to pull the yarn out of there, pinch with my left hand, pull the yarn with my right hand to get that drafting zone bigger because otherwise that section of my single would have been spun very thick. And I don't want a thickly spun section. I want it more consistent. And again, that's not the only way to correct that. You slow down your tradling. Pinch with your left hand stops the twist from coming up to your drafting zone and you can slow down your tradling if you ever feel like your spinning is out of control. And of course with a single tradle, that's gonna go, ooh, just barely, barely, barely got that back. I almost got into the orifice. Do this join. But if, you, if your legs are getting tired, you of course, with a single treadle, you can switch legs. And you may find if you're used to treadling with a particular leg, like I'm used to treadling on my single treadle here with my right leg, my left leg treadles a little bit differently and that's okay. You may also notice that you can treadle with a single treadle spinning wheel. You can also treadle with two feet at the same time. So here's examples. So now here's my left leg. I don't do this as much. So this, this makes me feel a bit more like a beginning spinner again. I treadle a little bit more slowly. It's not as, uh, Mindless as thoughtless. I have to have a bit more thought to my tradling. And I, I tradle just slower. And then, so when you're tradling with a different leg, you, then you have to adjust to how you're tradling. So that means I have to adjust my left hand, my right hand, my drafting to my tradling speed. And the more you spin with both legs, the better you get. So the more you spin with your left leg, the better your left leg gets. The more you spin with your right leg, the better your right leg gets. Now, it gets really fun when you do 
both legs like this. So this, obviously you have more muscle now, more muscle power, because you have the muscle of both legs pushing that treadle down. And so you can start treadling a bit faster. It makes it easier to treadle because there's more muscle from both your legs pressing down. So then you have to be careful again of how you're drafting in your left hand and your right hand and you just adjust. Adjust, adjust, adjust. But we'll go back to that left leg. Got a little bit left. We're gonna keep treadling because we're treadling slow. We don't have to stop the wheel. Join on. We didn't switch uh, on this one. We didn't switch the hooks. As you could see, the single wasn't moved. I just kept going. Second to last row leg. So the length of this video is how long it takes me to spin this ounce in a traditional traditional way. No art yarn, just spinning that consistent single. So it only took me about 20 minutes to hand card this one ounce of Angora and Gotland Blend. But it takes a bit longer to now spin it up into a single. And when we're making a three ply, we do this. This is the third time we're doing it because we have two bobbins already filled up, one ounce each. The cool thing is when we ply, we start plying this together, we can see how well we did spinning these in the same consistency. And how will we know? Well, since there's three different bobbins, the bobbins should run out of yarn. They should run out of that single when we're plying it at about the same time. And the closer they are to running out of yarn at the same time, the more consistently we spun each of those singles, the more similar these singles have been spun. Now, there's factors that matter in that. If we have, um, if I picked out a lot of second cuts, if I picked out a lot of vegetable matter, then there will be differences because each of these little things I pull out, of course, is weight. And if there's a lot of second cuts in, in one ounce, then you reduce the weight of that ounce and it changes your spinning. So all these, there's moss in here still. All these different things to consider. So now let's keep, oh, this little, there we go. Let's keep this wheel going. We're not gonna stop this wheel. We're just gonna slow our treadling down to add on the last bit of row leg. We pinch with our left hand when we do that. Oh boy, this really wanted to grab on fast. Try again. There we go, we got that 90. Joined on, I'm gonna adjust that tension. Move that. It was on the last one, that wasn't on the second to last one, goodness. Now it's on the second to last one. I had it on the last one before. That twist came, traveled up too far. This piece out, it's still in there. We'll get it out in a bit. There's another little section and that section. There we go, get these little pieces out for a thin yarn. This is the exciting part when you're so close to the end, you're so close to being done, especially if you're spinning a lot of yarn all day, eight hours of spinning can get kind of long. When you start getting towards the end, it can that's when you can start feeling like rushing it. But you don't want to rush it. You didn't, didn't make all this yarn just to ruin the end. Oh, there's a lump. You don't want that lump. That lump is still there. 
That was a weird join. That's a weird join. Let's do this right. We got a little thin. I don't like that. Make it thicker by allowing more of this wool, more of the roll egg to draft in. you pay attention you can actually feel in your right hand you can feel the fiber leaving your right hand all sorts of different small feelings to feel when you spin yarn so that's it this video was start to finish spinning a single of one ounce and you were able to watch the entire thing if you've got to the end and that's how long it takes to spin a single for me. We are done. Here's that single, beautiful, beautiful single. We've got these two over there, a whole mess of stuff all over, all these seconds and extra wool flying all over the place. But thanks for watching. We'll see you in our next video.